Hi, this is Steve Stein, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about who your best friend is. And what I mean by that is, is you think about your guitar and then your gear, like your amp, for instance, okay? Um, I was a, a, uh, a salesperson for many, many years at a company called Schmidt Music, and one of the things that I, I dealt with on a regular basis is people would come in and they'd have X amount of money that they're going to spend. So they want to buy a guitar, they want to buy an amp, or, or both, or whatever. And what I want you to really think about is the importance of what makes, what makes the most difference for you in terms of your connection to your gear. And let me explain it this way. For me, my guitars have always been the most important thing. The amp has always been secondary to me. Um, so if I go into a guitar store and I'm looking for a guitar amp that I want to buy, I will always bring my guitar with so I can try out the amp and I can make sure that it sounds the way I want it to sound. Because one of the biggest tricks about being in, in sales in a, in a guitar store, of course, is that you can set up a, you know, a student or a, a, I shouldn't say a student, but a, a player that you know you can you can put them with a really great amp and then sell them a lesser than wonderful guitar um, because they plug into this amp and they go oh my god this sounds amazing you know that sort of thing and vice versa so what I want you to always remember is that as you are on this quest for tone and you know feel and all these different things you have to define what what is going to be with you forever Right, you might have an amp that you absolutely love, and that's your that's your go-to amp. Um, or you might have a pedal that you always use for whatever, and that's your go-to pedal. Or, or if you're like me, you might have a guitar that that is your go-to guitar. And so, the reason I'm explaining this to you is because, like a lot of times, what people will do is they'll go, "Okay, I have X amount of money to spend, so I'm going to buy a guitar for half the money, and then an amp for half the money." Right. Well, now you wind up with two mediocre elements in your playing um, where maybe what would have been a better idea, it's just a suggestion, is you could have spent more of that money on a decent guitar that really fits you. It fits your style, it fits your flavor. Um, you know, not only does it look good, but it sounds awesome and it feels great, right? And then you get a lesser amp. Um, with the intentions of somewhere down the road, you're going to get an amp that, that fits, but this guitar is what's working, or vice versa. You know, you're going to spend more money on an amp because it really is the amp that has everything that you need, and you know further down the road you're going to be looking at getting yourself a, a, a guitar that, that serves your needs. Um, and even while I'm talking to you about this, I, I still always come back in my mind to where the guitar really needs to be, in my opinion, the most important thing because it's what you, it's what you play, it's what you feel. You know, you can cater your amp, in my opinion, you can cater your amp to whatever. Once you've got kind of a sound in your head of what you want, and this guitar is pushing out, you know, the, 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 it, it feels the right way. You know, you can always change the pickups on the guitar. You can always change the string style of the guitar um, to cater whatever it is you think you need from that guitar. But the feel is there. The neck feels right. You know, the, the frets feel good. If you're playing up high for soloing, everything feels really comfortable. You know, you're not being sold on just this, it's a Fender or it's a, you know, Gibson or it's a whatever. It's still got to feel right. So I want you to think about that a little bit the next time you go shopping for something um, is who is your best friend, right? Who is it that you have to start with? And please always remember that whatever that is, if it's a guitar or an amp or whatever, use that when you go in to try out stuff. Always bring that guitar with you and plug it in and then manage what amp or what pedal or whatever it is that you're really looking for. If you have a guitar amp combo that is working for you and you want to try out a particular pedal, again, the, the most ideal situation is you'd bring in both of those or you'd be able to, to borrow that pedal or rent that pedal or buy the pedal and bring it back if you needed to or something like that. Um, to try out in your in your rig because understand that the, the the more famous guitar players do that all the time they don't just um, you know you got to try it out with all of your gear to see how it's working so always remember that it's a really 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 important tip so who is your best friend and um, and how are you gonna sort of mold your tone and your style and everything around that uh, around that best friend so take care and I'll speak to you soon
Okay, so that's one. Just a words of wisdom thing. That's all it is. Okay, next one. Hey everybody, um, I get a lot of people that, that ask about guitar strap height when you stand up, when you're standing up and playing, um, and just standing up and playing in general. So that's what I want to talk to you about a little bit today. Now, as you practice on a daily basis, if your intention sometimes is to be able to play live or you are playing live but it feels a little bit uncomfortable, what you need to understand is there's two things involved here that you need to start off with. Number one, you need to make sure that you're actually practicing standing up. Don't just practice sitting down all the time because if you've tried it before, and I'm sure you have, standing up is way freaking different than sitting down, right? So sitting down, you can cuddle up and you know do the Igor thing over your guitar and look at everything. When you're standing up, you don't want to stand up and like do all this stuff because you're going to look kind of creepy, right? Um, so the goal is, is when you're at home, you gotta, you got to learn how to stand up and play. Um, so you, you put the guitar on, you stand up. If you've got a full-length mirror or some sort of mirror that you can look at, it's really good to do that, not from an ego standpoint, but because you can look at the, the mirror and watch yourself play versus staring down at your guitar. So you start getting used to how things feel. Now, instead of just staring down at it, you can look in the mirror and you can kind of see where you're going and kind of judge from there. And after a while, your body will get accustomed to that. Now, the second thing is, is the guitar strap height. And really, honestly, this just comes down to A, what's comfortable, and B, what looks comfortable. And you got to be careful with B because it's not a popularity contest, right? I mean, you've probably seen guitar players that have their guitars really, really high up, like John Petrucci from Dream Theater Place is really high up. Um, um, I mean, there, there's just a number of different players that, that play pretty high up. And then you've got all these other players that play like super, super low. And then you got everybody else that kind of plays in the middle, right? If you think about it, when you're, when you're playing standing up, if you were sitting down playing, it would be like having your guitar really, really high up like this. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you have to understand that from the rock and roll cool world, you shouldn't have your guitar up all the way up here, right? Like the Beatles or something like that. You'd have it down a little bit. Now the problem is, is as the guitar keeps going down, it's going to cause more and more tension with your wrist because you're going to have to curl around more to be able to reach things. If you're a guitar player that does a lot of soloing, you're going to wind up with a lot of problems if you lower it too much. So let's take a look at some of those players that play with their guitar straps really low when they play standing up. You know, you're talking about a lot of like punk bands or rhythm players that do a lot of that stuff because they're playing up here most of the time. Most of their stuff is here. They're not down here trying to solo, okay? So when you get into guitar players that do a lot of soloing, the guitar tends to come up a little bit more to find that comfortability. Now the wrist is still going to twist a bit more than it normally would when you're sitting down. So you have to find the balance between what feels comfortable when you're standing up, where it needs to be, and what looks comfortable when you're on stage. Um, there's no doubt a slash style lower guitar looks really cool, um, but that's all dependent on the length of your arms and you know the comfortability of your wrist when you're turned, and of course turning the guitar up like this. You know, if you, you know when you sit down and play, your guitar is usually straight across like this or pretty much anyway, when you play standing up, you turn your guitar like this so the neck is more up here or somewhere around there, right? So you're going to have to get used to having it at a, at a bit of an angle. So now this hand's going to go down a little bit further, this hand's going to come up a little bit, and you're going to learn how to play in that uh, capacity. Now there are players like uh, Zach Wild from Black Label Society, for instance, that will always prop, when he's going to do a solo, he'll either prop the guitar onto his leg and he'll play like this, or he'll prop his leg onto a, a monitor, again, to bring the guitar up so he can reach. Um, you know, there's, there's a million different ways of doing it. What I'm saying to you is the first place to start is you have to get used to practicing standing up. You just have to get used to doing it. Every day, you should be practicing standing up. If you have a mirror that you can look into, it really helps a lot because you can, kind of like how I'm looking at the camera right now, you can kind of watch and see what you're doing versus staring down like this. Um, and it really it begins dimensionally to be able to, to, to help you to understand you know, how far you need to be and all that sort of thing. Um, so you don't have to be staring at your guitar all the time while you're standing up on stage doing this. And again, it's not a cool factor, it's a comfortable thing. 
You know, you want to be comfortable with where things are without having to stare down at it the entire time. And even when you're sitting down, it's a good, a, a good practice tip is to be able to use a mirror for something like that. And of course, once you start getting used to standing up playing a little bit, then the second thing is, is that you need to get used to where you want that guitar strap to be. How high up do you need the guitar? And you need to fight that cool factor to find the, the most comfortable place for you to be um, so you can still play the way that you need to. If you're really more of a rhythm player, you might be able to have it a little bit lower and it'll still feel comfortable. But if you're trying to reach those high frets, you're going to need to, uh, to consider bringing it up a little bit. Now, I'm a very short human being. So when I play, having the guitar down really far does me no good because there's no way I can reach anything. And all of a sudden, my playing ability is compromised uh, because of where I got to put this stupid guitar. So I'm not really worried about that. My most important thing is I got to find where it's comfortable. Here's what I do for a trick if you really want to do this. I have on my guitar straps, I have strap locks. So what I have on my guitar is on the back side of my guitar straps, I have two strap lock ends. So that way, when I need to play something or whatever, I'm in a mode where I'm more trying to play better, I'll put it on the higher strap lock so it brings the guitar up further. If I've got a few songs that I need to play that aren't really soloing or don't really make any difference, I might put it on that lower strap lock level that brings the guitar down just a little bit, not real far, but just a little bit, so just it feels more rock and roll to me and that sort of thing. Um, and it works just fine. I, 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 I've always had my guitar straps like that. I have like three or four straps that I use on a regular basis and they have uh, the double strap lock on the bottom. So. Just something to think about. So hopefully that helps you a little bit with the problem of, of playing standing up and where to put that stupid guitar strap, right? So think about that a little bit and I'll talk to you soon.